Now, another voice trait is to speak clearly. Clarity over the phone involves communicating clearly with each customer. Here's some tips about your speech over the phone. The first part of speech and speaking clearly is articulating your words. Some people don't realize that when they speak on the phone, there's a need to speak even more clear than when you are face to face. We mentioned this early in, earlier when we talked about projecting your voice. So that's not only because visual cues are not present, but also because you're speaking to all types of people and some won't understand your daily speech very well. And some may have issues hearing you good enough for different reasons. Depending on your headset, it may also be necessary to project your voice a little more on the phone and enunciate your words more clearly from time to time. I love my son, but he is so easy to use as an example here. He's very easygoing and isn't in much of a hurry most of the time. This is how he speaks too. He can easily mumble or wait too long to respond. He actually speaks much softer when he gets on the phone than in person, and it makes it sound like he's mumbling. I'm constantly asking him to repeat himself, and when he takes a while to respond, I ask, are you there? I've had to ask that question to CSRs, as I mentioned earlier, but another, and so obviously that's something you want to avoid as well. Another part of speaking clearly is when a meaning is not clearly conveyed. Let's look at some examples of speaking in a way that conveys a different meaning than what you intended. The first one is, I pulled away from the side of the road, glanced at my mother-in-law, and headed over the embankment. That sounds a little odd, but obviously I think a person would shake their head and say, wait a minute, that's not what I meant. Let's look at another one. The guy was all over the road. I had to swerve a number of times before I hit him. I don't think that's what the guy meant to say, but it obviously sounds like he meant to hit the person he hit with his car. Let's look at the last one. I had been driving for 40 years when I fell asleep at the wheel and had an accident. So obviously if you haven't, you know, slept in 40 years, you're going to have an accident. So you want to be careful about the meaning that you're conveying. It's easier to make these mistakes when we get a little more tired and our focus isn't as sharp as it should be. If the customer doesn't seem to understand what you're saying, it's good to find a way to rephrase it. Some more traps to avoid are long or awkward pauses. I've mentioned this already, but I want to put it in a formal statement. I'm not sure I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one to listen to CSRs taking too long to respond or even the customer sometimes. And I gave the example of my son as well. Sometimes this happens when instructions were simply misunderstood and each one thought the other one was trying to complete a task. I've had that happen to me numerous times. I've had CSRs ask me, have you completed that yet? And I'd respond to them saying, I thought we were waiting on you. So this shouldn't happen on the CSR side. If the company has a policy for dead air time, which even if there's not a policy, this is something you should definitely be mindful of. Some companies have dead air time as low as five seconds maximum and no more than, or no more than 30 seconds on hold before checking back in with a customer. Either way, be careful not to be so deep in thought that you forget to respond to the customer and keep them informed of what you're trying to do and what you're thinking you should do for the next step. This should be a strategy to avoid both of these following situations. You want to make sure that you avoid, avoid using industry jargon. That's internal company language. And sometimes to people that don't work in your industry or at that company can sound like a foreign language. This is especially true um, in certain industries. I used to work in the telecommunications industry, and I remember feeling completely overwhelmed my first week of work when I realized that the company had all these acronyms and terms for their software, for their processes and other things that I, it sounded like when, they, when I overheard people speaking, they were talking a whole nother language. I couldn't understand anything. It, it takes a while to do a lot of that learning to be where they are. But once you get a hang of what they're saying, it's easy to use those words to your customers because now you're comfortable using them. 
And you want to be careful that you don't lose your customer's understanding because you're doing this. So I used, I mean, you have to learn to use industry jargon and acronyms very limited over the phone because it can be overwhelming. Now, if you have a caller from your industry, such as a situation where maybe you work for a home building company and a contractor calls in and he needs to order some cans, you know right away that he's talking about recessed lighting. But you know that because now you've already perceived that he knows your industry and you can probably use a little industry jargon back and forth that will actually increase his confidence in your ability to help him and in your company. So it's good to ask questions though, if you're not sure that you're on the same page as the customer to gauge their competency level of your product or service so that when you communicate, it's on an equal level. And that's our next topic. Communicate at your customer's level of competency. Products or services can be very complex, especially in their offerings. And you know what your offerings are because you work at that company and you understand. So you want to be careful not to assume that you know exactly that they are on the same level that you're on in understanding what's available. So you want to ensure understanding by listening and asking a few questions. Simple language is much better to use unless you really know that they're on a higher level of competency than maybe your average customer. The next voice trait to avoid that we'll talk about next is slang. You maybe you've heard your CSR say, wow, that's cool. Or dude, you want to build a professional relationship with your customers. And in doing this, you're actually not going to talk with them like you do your friends or even your family at times. It's not your job to become their buddy or their friend. So there is such a concept as lowering your level of professionalism to quote, relate to your customers. It actually has an opposite effect on having on in, in, in such that your customer can lose respect for you. Even if they're lowering their standards and saying those things back to you, you want to keep it on a professional level in return. That's actually what they want. They want to feel appreciated and respected and still be friendly. You know, there's restaurants that you can go to and they're famous for maybe when you ask for bread, they throw you your bread. It's a very casual environment. There's even businesses, there's a fish market that when you walk in, they instantly start insulting you. And it's that way throughout your whole interaction. And people actually seek this out because it's such a different type of experience. Now, those are on extremes, but customers will appreciate the respect of your professionalism and feel like you're competent and provide a quality service. That's what 99.9% .9 of people want in every experience that they have. We've talked a little bit about mumbling. I want to take this up a little bit more. I, heard, I was on the phone with a CSR and I could visualize him talking to me like this. And I could hardly understand him. And I was so annoyed by the fact that I could tell he was not interested in my call. I was just another caller for him. You know, he was tired or bored, but it didn't make me feel good about the call experience and made me question why the company would allow such a standard. If you are getting tired, you are human. You need to stand up and take the call. Maybe walk around and just revive yourself a little bit. Maybe you just put some water on your face, grab an energy drink, coffee, or just stretch, you know, just do something to revive yourself because there are going to be those times in the day that you feel a little sluggish, especially after lunch. So just be aware of those times and make sure that that isn't the message that you're sending across to your customer because you don't want the call to be about you.